What's going on guys, John Kelly here, and today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about setting up a hammock for a beginner. I'm actually on a trip right now with the infamous Taylor McDonald from Southern Hike, and you're actually looking at his first real hammock. And so today I just wanna to talk to you about a few things about if you're looking into getting into hammock camping, some things that you can buy, some things that you can pick up that will help make the experience better. So when you're getting a hammock set up, uh, there are four main parts of the hammock setup. You've got the hammock, you've got the tarp, you've got your insulation, and you've got your suspension. And so the first thing I want to talk about is suspension. Uh, as you can see, the way Taylor's got this set up, you've got uh, this suspension from Dutchware gear. These are some polyweb straps, and he's using something called a beetle buckle down here. Uh, what this does is allows for any kind of adjustments that you want to make with the hammock, which I probably took his hammock completely out of comfort zone just now by doing that. But uh, hopefully he'll forgive me for that. I'm sorry, Taylor. <laughs> That's my fault. Also, you've got to find some way to hang your tarp. A tarp doesn't just hang in the air above your, your hammock because that would be really strange. But uh, you, you've got to have some kind of a ridge line or suspension. As you can see, he's got this one from Hammock Gear. Uh, it's just a simple uh, line that ties up to a little carabiner. I don't know if you can zoom in on this. Just this little carabiner right here. Uh, just connects around the tree and then you've got line locks right up here on the hammock uh, where you can control just how tight this is pulled. Uh, easy setup. Uh, there are loads of different ways you can do this. This is just the way that Taylor's doing it, and it's a very easy setup to do. Okay, so we're kind of going backwards on the list. We just talked about suspensions. Now I want to talk to you about insulation. Uh, one of the important things to have for a hammock setup is proper insulation, and one of the best things to remember right off the top is the need for an underquilt. And the underquilt that Taylor has here is a 30 degree UGQ underquilt. Uh, a couple key features of this that are great is there's just multiple places where you're able to adjust this to make it fit to your hammock better. You can tighten things up. Uh, you've got a hook up here that allows you to connect it to the hammock easily. Um, another key feature that you need to have on an underquilt are these baffle systems. Uh, the idea of an underquilt is that you want to make sure that there's not a lot of air and wind getting under your backside and giving you what they called cold butt syndrome. So you want to have a quilt that can do that. And Taylor's done a great job of picking out a high quality quilt to use for his. Now, as far as top quilts go, you've probably heard those topics before, underquilt and top quilt. The underquilt is the one that obviously goes underneath you. The top one is basically the top layer. Taylor's done a great job picking a high quality underquilt in UGQ, and he's done the same on the top with the enlightened equipment 30 degree revelation quilt. Uh, I have the 20 degree version of this and I can tell you these are fantastic quilts. But having a good top and bottom quilt system is fantastic and vital if you want to sleep well at night. Um, having yourself surrounded in a cocoon of warmth, which is something I've talked about multiple times on this channel, is vital if you're going to get a great night's sleep in your hammock. So we've talked about the suspension, we've talked about the insulation, now we're gonna talk about your tarp. This is really important because rain, snow, weather in general, high winds, tarps are vital to give you a good night's sleep and to protect you when you're sleeping at night. First thing you're gonna notice is this weird thing hanging over the tarp. Um, these uh, go by a number of different names. Uh, some people call them snake skins, um, a lot of people just call them covers, but this is basically to easily store your tarp in your backpack. And so all you have to do with these is literally just pull them back. This is a pretty standard tarp that you'd see a lot of people get when they start out, and it's a great choice to begin with. This is just a simple hex cut tarp, um, typically made of a sill poly or sill nylon, um, usually weather treated with a DWR coating. This one I believe is from Hammock Gear. Uh, they make great gear, great hammocks, um, and, and their tarps are fantastic. I actually own a Dyneema tarp from Hammock Gear. The thing only weighs seven ounces. It's got doors, it's fantastic. I'm pretty sure that you're gonna see Taylor end up with one of those Dyneema tarps at some point, uh, because even though we all say we're not Graham nerds, we're all kind of Graham nerds if we're really being honest. Having a tarp like this is fantastic just for protection, and he's got it set up great because he actually has it set up facing west. Now, why is that a big deal? It's because uh, 
if you have your your hammock facing east and west, there's a chance that wind is going to be blowing in through that tarp as opposed to blowing against the tarp. He's got his tarp set up so that the wind is actually going to blow against the tarp, not in through the opening on either side. So it's a great setup for him for tonight. Having a tarp that's going to protect you in nasty weather is vital if you want to have a fantastic night's sleep. So we've talked about the suspension. We've talked about the insulation. We've talked about the tarp. Now we're going to talk about the most important part of this whole setup and that is the hammock itself and as you can see here uh, we've got a Dutchware chameleon that Taylor has picked out uh, made with a 1.0 hexon fabric this thing is super lightweight super comfortable will breathe amazingly um, but a few key features of any hammock that you want is uh, first off I'm a big fan of a bug net now there will be some out there who say you don't need one, and they're probably right, you don't necessarily need one. You can use permethrin, bug spray, things like that to keep bugs off of you. But for me, I kinda like to watch movies in my hammock. Okay, listen, I know. I know you technology, like people that don't like technology in the woods. You think it's a sin to watch movies in your, in your hammock? I'm not one of those people. I have a four and a five year old. I don't wanna watch Bluey. I wanna watch Star Wars. So if I'm in my hammock and I wanna watch a movie or something, I don't want bugs to get on me. I want the bug net because there's gonna be a light emanating from that phone, which will attract insects. So for me, I like to have the bug net regardless. Uh, there's some other things you can get for these. They have top covers for the winter time so that it just traps more warmth inside the hammock. So if you are somebody who's in really cold temperatures, those top covers can be vital. Um, on this one in particular, you've got the ability to zip this off not only on one side, but both sides. So you don't have to worry about getting out on one side or the other. Another thing about this hammock, it's a little different from the one I use, is this one is made so it doesn't matter which diagonal you lay on, it's going to be fine. Mine is set up so I have to lay from left to right. And that's great for what I need. But looking back, I kind of wish I'd have gotten something like this uh, just for the fact that you can set it up however you want. You've also got a ridge line in here. Now, if you're someone who's buying an Eno hammock or like a bare butt hammock or something like that, you're probably wondering what this is right here. This is a ridge line. What the ridge line allows is for the hammock itself to have a curve to it when you hang it. Without a ridge line, you can actually hang your hammock in such a way that it's being stretched out and doesn't lay the way it's supposed to. A ridge line allows for the hammock to be uh, hung up in such a way so that the, the hammock itself always has that nice curve to it. So it's gonna be very comfortable. So having a ridge line on your hammock can be a huge deal on your hammock purchase as well. You can also see that there's things you can buy, little features like little pockets and things that you can hang from the ridge line. It allows for storage options. Dutchware gear, dream hammock, hammock gear, all these companies have some fantastic stuff for that. If you're getting into hammock camping, you definitely want to check them all out. One other thing that I love about a lot of the hammocks that come out today is that you have these little connectors that allow you to connect the hammock to your underquilt. Uh, just kind of holding the hammock in place because one of the things that can happen a lot of times is your underquilt can slide underneath you as you're laying in it. But being able to hook this thing up to the underquilt itself just gives you the ability to have a little bit more stability in the underquilt, not having to adjust it all the time. I'm not gonna say that's gonna make it perfect every time, but it definitely makes it a touch easier to use that way. So if you're interested in getting a hammock, those are the basics. Those are just the simple basics of what you need to know when you're out looking for a hammock setup. If you have any other ideas to go along with that, you know you can leave those in the comments below. And if you wanna find out why I prefer a hammock to a tent in cold weather, check out this video right up here. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you find out anytime one of these videos drops. And until next time, stay strong, hike long, and I will catch you on the next go around.